Hey folks, Ray from DCRamerica.com here. Today I've got a gigantic open water swim comparison test. Um, I've got all these watches plus this one and the one that's on my wrist that you probably just barely see right there. Uh, and I'm gonna do a test between all of them. Now, I'm not gonna do them all at once because as much as that would make like a good YouTube clickbait thumbnail, uh, it's just not accurate. Uh, if you put more than one watch on each wrist, it's gonna impact GPS accuracy, especially in open water swimming where GPS accuracy is so tough to begin with. Uh, so I've basically been doing this all week long. I've been running with pretty much three watches uh, per day, every single day, uh, one on each wrist, and then a reference watch on top of the swim buoy itself. Uh, and so the reference watch is used to go ahead and basically track the actual location of our track that is not in the water. Uh, so basically it's above the water, it floats there behind me. It's also used so that people in boats and stuff like that out there don't hit me which is, is kind of important um, but it's in running mode as opposed to open water swim mode because if you're in open water swim mode it applies special algorithms which gets to the next part so one of the key things is that all these watches here have an open water swim mode and why that's important is that every single stroke that you have as soon as it hits the water and goes underneath the water like this you're losing gps satellite accessibility uh, so at that point in time it's it's on its own until it goes back above the water and then you got about one to one and a half seconds to recover and it finds gps satellite in that time and tries to figure it all out now of course it's trying to figure out exactly where you are and typically it doesn't really do a great job of that. So it finds like, you know, your position within maybe 10 meters, 20 meters, even a hundred meters. Uh, and if you were to plot all those dots, it would look pretty crappy. Uh, and that's what, you know, a non uh, open water swim mode would do on a, on a watch. But with an open water swim mode, it'll go ahead and run an algorithm over the top of those and try to figure out exactly where you're going. Uh, now it's not a very precise science and it really hasn't been for a number of years. Uh, typically I'm looking for between, you know, plus or minus five to 10% off the actual swim track. That would be a, a good day. And I'm looking for something where it's not like completely off the left field or right field or way out of the, the middle of nowhere. That's a good day. I'm looking for something that roughly represents, like if you ask a child to trace your swim line, that's what you kind of want. Um, if you can get it like spot on, then more power to you. But most times in all the years I've been doing this, it's not really gonna happen. So as I said, I paired basically two watches, one to each wrist per day, um, and I put them on the girl as well, and so we've been swimming out here, uh, basically just kind of running through these. And they're kind of like random collection of watches, so one day it's Apple Watch versus the new Polar Vantage series, another day it's uh, Garmin versus something else. I've kept the reference the same across all of them though, again in that running mode, so it gives us the full uh, track accuracy of one second recording points. Uh, but otherwise, it's just kind of a mix match. And so what we're gonna do is just simply, I'm gonna go for my last swim here. Uh, the girl had to head for the airport, unfortunately. Uh, but I've got just a little bit of time to get one more swim in there. And then we're gonna run through all the data sets like wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Get them done, I'll show you what worked and what didn't work. Now, of course, you may remember I did this back in July-ish, I think, sometime like that. Uh, and it was generally pretty bad. The, the Sunto Spartan 9 did crappy, the Phoenix 5, Plus did crappy. Um, some watches did better, and so I'm interested to see how things how things have improved over the entire uh, summer. I know they've released firmware updates for both of those, so hopefully things are a little bit better. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and jump in the water, get everything all settled up. I'm gonna hook on the 935, which is my reference for all this stuff, onto the swim buoy, and uh, we'll get rolling. Oh, one thing that's cool about the swim bag is I can put stuff inside of it. So I can go ahead and put my shoes in there, for example, as sandy as they are. I can then put my shirt in there, which will be even more sandy when all is said and done. But it's alright, I got lots of t-shirts and I'm flying home anyways. I can put my hat in there. There we go. I can put uh, my phone in there. There we go. Phone's in. You can see all this crap goes in there. I can put the watches I'm not even using on this swim that I just took out to take photos of. I do need that one there. In there. There we go. And then I just simply pack it up. So to do that. Okay, as you can see here, I've got the Polar Vantage V on this wrist. I've got the 935 floating above the surface right here. Uh, from a reference track standpoint, this whole thing floats. It doesn't even feel it, by the way. Some people ask that, like if you feel the buoy, never. Um, it's nice. I use. I've been using it for many, many years. I'll put a link down on the bottom there. It's awesome. Like it just. I feel safe. Like I know there's jet skiers out there. A guy just went by a second ago. Um, just to know that they can see me really easily is what you should do. Like I would never swim without it. Uh, and then on this wrist, I've got the uh, Garmin Phoenix 5 Plus, uh, the middle one, not the X or the S, just the middle one. Uh, so that's that. Uh, I'm just letting this bolt get GPS. Uh, and then I'll keep them above the water about five seconds after I press start, just kind of like what you do in a race. You might press start and then wait for the starting line. Uh, and then off I'll go. 
and I'm basically just gonna kind of swim all the way around like I said before. Oh, some people also ask where I put the GoPro. Uh, it's on the little shorty stick and I just simply put it underneath the leg of my swimsuit and it stays there, no problem. Okay, we're at like the, the pole point, if you will. That's the, uh, I don't know if it's gonna be the halfway point or what point it's gonna be. It's just a point. Um, so the Vantage V reads 0.41 miles. The Phoenix 5 Plus reads 524 meters, might be yards, but either way, it's definitely short in the Vantage. Uh, and then this thing up here reads 0.34 miles. Uh, so I'll put the conversions down below there. We'll see, definitely some a little bit slower today, maybe too many margaritas last night. So I'm gonna head on down that way towards the green stuff, but I'm not gonna get too close to the green stuff because that's where the alligators live or the crocodiles live. So uh, I'm not kidding by the way, but more than that in a little bit. Anyways, let's head down that way. Okay, that's the end of the swim there. Uh, so this one's got 0.76 miles on the poor Vantage V. This has 0.61 miles on the reference. And this is a 1260, 75, 80. This is like the usual problem I have right now with the, the Phoenix 5. Uh, it just keeps on counting after I'm done swimming. I've been here for a little while now, maybe 10, 15 seconds, and it's still counting. Though not as much anymore though. So 1282, uh, we'll give it another 5, 10 seconds and we'll call that done. Uh, but I'll put the actual mileage on the bottom down there. But first, let's go talk to the alligators. So it says wildlife habitat conservation area, but I think the little white sign in the back there basically says crocodiles, um, which is what it essentially is. There's actually crocodiles back there. In fact, we saw them uh, just the other day, uh, early in the week, and they're really big ones too. I wouldn't really want to screw with them. Uh, so yeah, we won't be uh, swimming anywhere near this area. Um, I figured like a couple hundred meters far away. Crocodile certainly went something that far, right? Okay, so here we are looking at the actual data itself. Now I'm just going to rip through these because it's just looking at a map and we can all do that pretty simply and by now you've already figured out which track is the best one. Uh, now the yellow is the reference to swim buoy. Uh, I did it yellow so it's obvious and easy to see, though it does make the text up here with the different titles a bit harder. Uh, so you can see here the swim buoy is of course very, very smooth. If we look at that blue track right there, uh, that's the Garmin Phoenix 5 Plus. Uh, you can see it has a lot less like point segments if you will so it's definitely more smooth um, but it's certainly not perfect it kind of bounces around quite a bit but it gets the general gist of things correct just with less data points whereas the red the polar vantage v has more data points more squiggles more kind of lines around it um, and also gets the general gist of things but isn't correct either so you can kind of decide like which which extreme you want do you want more data points but wrong um, or less data points but wrong it's it's really your choice they're both they're both not quite right um, if we scroll down you can see the distances right here. These are the distance recorded in the files itself. So swim buoy was just shy of 1k at 0.99k. Uh, the polar vantage V was 1.25k and the Garmin was 1.18k. Uh, you can ignore the ascent. Uh, that's just sort of the way things kind of show up here in the analyzer uh, from open water swim files. So again, ignore those particular. So here we are the day before. Uh, in this case, I had the Sunto 9 on one wrist and I had the Coros Pace on the next wrist. Uh, you can see the swim buoy again there in yellow. In this case, the Coros Pace is quite literally all over the map um, and I'm not really sure what's going on there but it, it's not right so these weird like it does good for a while and then it just completely had a left field and right field um, I suspect looking at those data points and where it's doing that that is where I may have had my arm under the water for extended periods of time like just taking a stop or taking a photo or something like that and that's something that I've seen sometimes open water swim watches early in their firmware cycles will have issues with uh, where they can't recover from, you know, if you stop somewhere. And of course, if you've open water swam before, uh, then you certainly know there are places that you stop. Sometimes you're waiting for a group, for example, uh, or your buddy to catch up or whatever the case may be. Uh, and so it should be able to recover without having these huge, you know, out of the way points on there. And this in the case didn't. But the Sunto 9 is actually worse because it just simply stopped. So if you look right there in the middle, it simply stop. Now it was recorded the entire time. If you look at the, the time duration uh, that'll show you down at the bottom there, it does show the entire duration of the swim. It just simply, yeah, it, it just did that. Um, and I've seen this before with the Sunzo 9. It's something that I saw back this past summer. So that's unfortunate. Uh, so going on down here though to the distances, 
You can see the Sunzo 9 was at half a kilometer, uh, the Sumbui reference was at 0.78 kilometers, and the Coral's Place was at 0.67 kilometers. Next we get the girl's swim. Now she was swimming directly next to me this entire time on the previous swim, uh, so these are basically just our watches separated out. We're using the same swim buoy data because again she was uh, within one arm's length of me, so that's good enough for what we're looking for right here. You can see in this case she had the Spartan trainer, that's that teal watch that you see on her wrist right there, uh, but she also had the Polar Vantage V on the other wrist. And this is actually the best Vantage V track that I I've seen uh, and I'm not really sure why there's lots of theories I have there maybe that her stroke turnover is higher because a uh, little bit small arms and just she tends to have a higher stroke turnover uh, than me but in this case this is the strongest GPS track from the Vantage I've seen yet um, the Sunto trainer as you can see very clearly was again literally all over the map um, looking at the distances itself down here we have uh, the swim buoy at 0.78 and we have the polar Vantage V at 0.79 so virtually identical we have the Spartan Trainer at 1.37k, so way out there. Um, again, look at this track. I mean, really, really close for that Polar Vantage V. Without question, the best GPS track I've seen. It lay down in the water. So now at this point, you may be saying, ah, oh, it's not fair. The, the Sunto Trainer only got one swim and the Polar Vantage got four swims. Yeah, life's not fair. That's the way it works. Um, so in this case, I just swam with different watches each day, and that's kind of the way it worked out. I have a lot of watches I want to swim with. In particular, I'm working on reviews for the Polar Vantage and for the Apple Watch and for uh, the uh, Coros Pace there. Uh, so those are ones that I was prioritizing over other watches. So other watches kind of came along for the ride each single day. And that's where, like, if you go for a swim, it can't be like, oh, I should have worn a different watch today because you probably don't have, like, a gazillion watches and so it has to work every day or at least be good enough every day and when you see tracks like that it's definitely not good enough. Next, the day prior to that, I took out the Garmin Instinct that just came out on Thursday um, against the Polar Vantage V. Uh, and you can see here the differences in how these watches are handling open water again. Uh, so in this case, the Garmin Instinct is plotting less points, um, definitely smoothing things out. It has a couple errors, notably right here and right here, and then it overshoots the turnaround a little bit coming around the corner here. Um, whereas the Polar Vantage B is a bit more like wobbly uh, as it goes around here, but it's closer to the track itself. And so you can kind of decide, uh, again, which one you want. Um, it's interesting looking at distance though. If we go down here at the bottom, uh, the swim buoy is 0.88 uh, kilometers and the Garmin Instinct is 1.09. So again, that's the, the going around up that we saw right there at the around the island over here, definitely impacted that. Uh, and then the Vantage V is at 0.98. So certainly closer to the, the reference as well. Um, I know some people like from a Strava standpoint would probably prefer the the teal of the Garmin Instinct but obviously you know in terms of like accuracy wise uh, the Vantage V was closer to the reference. And finally the last set here I have the Apple Watch Series 4 against the Vantage V. Um, now you'll notice right away that like the swim buoy and the Apple Watch are near perfect on top of each other. I mean this is really really good and I saw this last year with the Apple Watch Series 3 that its open water swim tracking was phenomenal uh, except at that point you couldn't actually export out the swim track so I really couldn't like show it as well as I wanted to, but look at it here. I mean, this is very, very, very good. Keep in mind, there is no cell phone with me on this particular track. Um, I know in the video earlier, you saw me put a cell phone in the bag, but for this actual swim here, there was no cell phone at all with me. It was all the way back um, at the resort. So this is just the watch itself doing its thing. There was no cellular on this watch either. It's just a, a regular Apple watch without the LTE part of it. Uh, you can see the Polar Vantage V was wobbly like usual that we've seen, but more importantly, it ended over here near the island. Like it just saw the island and, and gave up like castaway stuff. Uh, so I'm not really sure why I ended it down here. In fact, I actually have a video of it ending on the beach itself, uh, but it simply stopped back here. Uh, and as a result of that, you see that in the distance itself. One of these times I'm going to get it right going which way here on the, the scroll down. We can see the swim buoy at 0.8 kilometers. Um, now, the Vantage V is 0.76 and the Apple Watch is 0.35K. I think the summary data that's shown there isn't quite correct. Still, no matter what the summary data looks like, the track itself looks pretty good. And if you were up to a Strava anyways, it would recalculate that track to whatever the heck it wants to. Ultimately though, as I said at the very beginning of the video, you're not gonna get like perfect tracks every single time with devices on your wrist, um, though the Apple Watch comes really darn close. Uh, you're looking for it to be very, very close to the, uh, the reference. And for me, if I want like perfect GPS tracks, I'm just going to throw it either in my swim cap um, or the swim buoy and get that, that sort of perfect track. You'll lose things like your stroke rate and whatnot, uh, but for me, I honestly prefer the pretty map over the stroke rate data that I'm never ever going to look at again. So with that, thanks for watching. Go and like that like button at the bottom if you found this interesting or more importantly, subscribe button. Uh, both of those really help with the channel here. Have a good one.